can get yourself in situations sometimes. Sometimes you go out and you just do something because you think it's the right thing and it may not financially be the right thing for you. So for the next story, that's, that's what we're going to talk about. Please welcome to the stage the amazing Tamara and Jason. Jason. How are you, mate? Nice I'm shirt. Good, a hug. Yeah. Thank you, darling. Thanks, you started um, in a position that wasn't quite great. You'd made a business decision that wasn't going to work out for you. Yes, well, we didn't have anything really. We didn't have any uh, property to start with. So we were both working in Sydney and suddenly decided that we would pack up and buy a business in Queensland. The um, Gold Coast dream. <laughs> Just decided you would buy one. Just decided yeah. we'd buy one. So what one. did you decide to buy? We bought a cafe. And had you had experience in that before? Absolutely none whatsoever. So and did you have to bake anything? <laughs> yeah. It yeah. was a cafe bakery, yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. a cafe bakery yeah. and you'd never baked anything before. No. You'd never never mixed dough or done anything. And two weeks after we bought it, we lost the, the pastry chef and the bakery chef. So, so yeah. what did you do before then? Uh, I was a hotel manager. And Tam was in hotels in supervising that. Right. So not only did you go into a business that you didn't really know the inside and out of it, um, you were in a shopping centre and the management approached you. Yeah, well, we were paying um, exorbitant rent. We were paying like $13,000 a month in rent for this shop. Uh, yeah, didn't know any better. Yep. Uh, the business itself was actually turning over about $15,000 a week when we started, so it wasn't too bad um, being able to make the payments and everything like that. So, um, plodding along, doing okay, had a bit of a hiccup, Jason lost his brother to cancer, and uh, it sort of, our motivation stopped, um, didn't quite know where to go. It sort of took us about six months to pick ourselves back up to sort of rework the business and sort of get back into, you know, it's not a matter of just... I'll just say one thing there. When we signed the lease on the, the business, they had in there that they were doing renovations. They were, uh, within 14 months, they were going to put on a new Audi shopping centre, which was basically going to be built on the car park. Um, our shop had 35 seats outdoor, 35 indoor. They put on the lease a proposed seating area to move our seating area out the back of our shop, overlooking the river, Beautiful balcony. Um, pick because, that word. Because they were going to take your 35 outdoor to put the Aldi yeah. in and yep. they gave and you the proposed area out yeah. the back. To the back. Yep. So pick that word on the lease. It had proposed. Yeah. So, yeah, when they built the Aldi, basically they... Sh and our shop was right at the entrance um, of one end of the shopping centre. When they were building Aldi, it got blanked off. Um, basically, we were in a dark dungeon. So no, no longer was there any traffic running past no. you. You were down the end, yep. and they so they basically halved the amount of yep. seats that you had. And did they drop your rent at all? No. No. We went through a lot of battle to try and uh, yeah get get rent reductions and things like that. But uh, yeah, we really couldn't afford to you know go to solicitors, lawyers, and that at that stage. Um, so, so yeah, you end up negotiating with them to downsize into a smaller shop yep. and in the end it was just not making ends yeah. meet and you had to make a call on it. So you both go to the Northern Territory, to Darwin, to work? No, no, no team stayed in Queensland. Stayed um, in Queensland. I took off. We had a young daughter at that stage. Um, had to get a job. Um, so yeah, I got a job in the mines in Northern Territory as a camp manager, which was basically two weeks on, one week off. Um, very hard being separated from your family when... You're a, you're a family orientated man, yeah. but uh, had to do what we had to do. So you didn't have, you'd, you'd lost everything lost by that everything. stage. You decided to go back to Sydney and... Moved in with mum. And lived with mum, yeah. and they lent you enough money to get into this house here. Well, yeah, they, um, we basically moved in with mum and dad, and whilst we were there, Jason had, was flying back in and out from Northern Territory. He decided to come back to Sydney and start work as well. And somewhere along the line, found out I was pregnant with twins. <laughs> so, living in a house with your parents, you've got a... I think our daughter at the time was eight or nine, uh, twins on the way, um, 
didn't really have any savings because uh, when I fell pregnant with twins, we'd only just gone back to work, so I was only back in full-time uh, full employment for three months. So not being able to save much at all, um, Mum and Dad basically said to us, look, the kids got to about 18 months old, it was just hectic, we were driving each other nuts, ready to kill each other. Um, they gave us some money to purchase that property that's on the screen there, which is uh, in the Southern Highlands in New South Wales. We picked that up for $297,000. Um, Worst you, house in the best street. Yeah, for you it wasn't, internally it wasn't a very nice place, you had to clean it up, there was bad carpet. There's um, cigarette butt burns all over the carpet, cat, cat wee everywhere. Cat wee everywhere. Yeah. The kitchen was, you know, the beautiful old kitchen that had the, um, the maroon bench tops with the lime green handles and the wood look panel doors that had... Hydroponics in the garage. <laughs> it, had, it was a great house. It even had matching verticals that were actually stapled together. <laughs> to be held on. So we literally had to go in there and rip out the kitchen just to be able to live in this house, um, which wasn't a bad thing after all because Jason's very good on eBay and we actually picked up a brand new $15,000 kitchen for $3,000 um, going to a, an ex-display place. So it's amazing what you can find if you yeah. look. All we had to do was literally just rip it out. So you go, you turn up at the one day event because you see an advertisement, you sit in there, you've got, you got very low income, no savings, you can't afford to join the program, but you do realise on that day that you can do things with low money or no money down. That's correct, yeah. So Listening you to Dimna, it was, it, it really does spin your mind to think that, okay, people always say, I've read every property book there is out there. And all of, most of the books that you buy, like the Sean Summersville and all the, all the rest of it, they all say, yeah, you can do all this stuff and I've earned, you know, gone from nothing to $140 million and all the rest of it, but they don't tell you how they do it. They tell you that you can do it, but you've got no idea. So going to Deepner's course, I rang up Jason at the end of it and I said, look, I really, really, really want to pay for this course. How are we going to do this? <laughs> I just went like this. <laughs> <laughs> so we ended up paying it off doing the payment plan, paying it off. So in that time um, that we were paying it off, I literally just went back through all of her notes, really studied what she was writing, trying to sort of compare the notes that we had to stuff that was on realestate.com because I did hear about the investor program, but of course we had no money to actually invest in it. So we were trying to work out how we were actually going to find a property to put what she'd said into good use. So we did a real estate search for basically New South Wales, and all I typed in was properties under $100,000. And as you can imagine, they came up everywhere. Um, so not only did we look for that, we picked a few spots, found some where the towns had around about 10,000 people in them, um, and came across an ad that had JV wanted. So Jason rang the real estate, he went down there and spoke to the agent, which was over seven and a half hours drive away from where we were living. Um, went down there and met him and spoke to him and said, um, you know, what's the deal? What does this guy want? Um, found out that the JV deal that he wanted, the farmer had actually owned this massive part, like corner block. And on one side of the block, he had this four bedroom fibro asbestos house. It was in derelict condition. Um, and on the other side, he actually had a block of uh, brick veneer units, and there was three units in this block. Uh, there was two one-bedrooms and a uh, three-bedroom unit in this block. And the farmer had basically purchased it so that in eight, he'd purchased it and he wanted to knock the whole thing down and then build his dream home, but not being able to do that, he wanted someone to go in with him to build uh, six units on the, two, on the, on the massive block. Um, we couldn't afford to do that. So we were basically going to pass up on this JV deal, but we still looked around, um, down and around the town for the other houses and stuff down there that were worth under the $100,000. Yeah, I, when, when I went up there on that week, I, I mentioned to the real estate agent, um, who was actually head of the council as well, which was handy. Um, <laughs> I, I, I said to him, I, I'm not interested in the JV. If he wants to um, separate the blocks, we'll, we'll, I'm, I'm offered, you know, offering money for the for the units. Um, the next week, Tam was on the phone all that week because I said, you know, this spot is a good spot. We need to get in there. Rang like five of the real estates. We left home at 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning, um, drove up there or down there and um, basically started visiting 
different properties with the um, separate real estate agents. The last real estate agent was this guy that had um, that property and he, was, he showed us three properties and I, I just wasn't really interested in them. They were, you know, falling down, cracks everywhere. Um, and the, last, the second last property that we're leaving to the last, he said, what about the units? And I said, well, mate, you know, you haven't got back to me. And I said, I'm buying today. If you don't have an answer, um, the units are gone. By the time we got two streets away, um, he'd already rang the farmer and accepted our offer. So you so got a, a, a block of three units, $95,000, yeah. yep. and you, you didn't really have a lot of money. You had very little money. We had, we had $20,000 $20, left in our mortgage to be able to actually purchase something, which is why we were looking at under $100,000, thinking that, you know, 10 grand basic deposit, um, 10 grand to renovate. I don't know what the hell we were thinking. Who renovates with $10,000? <laughs> um, so we did. So you went in there, you, it's two one-betters and a three-better. Yep. The two one-betters you could get, and you organised a condition. What condition? Yeah, when we actually purchased or agreed to purchase, we, the, we found out that the owner had actually put in a subdivision already on separating the house and the units um, prior to us actually negotiating a deal. So the subdivision hadn't come through yet. So we said, as one of the conditions, we're not settling on this property until the subdivision is actually registered and comes back from the land titles office, which gave us about six months from the time we gave our initial deposit to the time we actually settled. And not only did we negotiate that, we also negotiated to be able to actually get into the property and start renovating it during that period so that we weren't actually waiting around for six months to then get into the property and do something. So very little money. You need to put new kitchens and stuff in in the two new units. So um, I love this idea within reason when you're low on money. What did you do? We went shopping at Ikea and... Oh, hang on, hang on. <laughs> I hate credit cards. I, I, I dead said hate credit cards. This ad come on TV. Ikea, 24 months interest free. And I went, oh, it could be a way. So... We went to Ikea and basically bought the kitchens, the vanities, uh, everything. Anything you taps. can. Every you can stuff. buy tapware, yep. you can buy everything All from of Ikea. the appliances. We picked up that day. That was, it was quite funny because actually that day when we went there, the whole kitchens themselves, I think, come to about $3,000, including the appliances. And each kitchen. Each kitchen. Yeah, so that's you right. in total, you spent about $8,000 $8, at Ikea. Yeah, yeah. So there's $8,000 on credit. Credit's not a great thing, but when you've got no money... It was interest-free. It was interest-free, <laughs> and as long as you're using the cash flow to pay down the debt um, and hopefully pay off early, then you're okay, right? So you did the three-bedroom last because you had a tenant that was already living yeah. in that? Yeah, the tenant, the tenant in the three-bedroom, when we actually purchased the units, he was paying $105 a week, so he, his rent alone was actually covering the mortgage repayment. Mortgage, yep. So that was a bonus for us. So we sort of took our time, went into the units. I think about six months after we actually settled on the units, we finally got them completed. Yeah, that was the state of the units. They were fantastic. Um, oh, just add that's, there. Sorry, <coughs> that's post-renovation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, this, um, yeah, this is when I first walked in there and I rang Tam and uh, Tam said to me, well, I've done all the hard work. All you have to do is, you know, click the floorboards together. <laughs> I thought so it was I sent so her easy. these photos and said, yeah, this is the hard work. So this is where you've gone in. Now, you uh, have to learn how to do everything yourself because you have to do it yourself. You can't afford to pay anyone. Uh, you're driving up there, doing it at a every time. You've set up a little bed somewhere. You set up a... Um, a we don't have stretcher. it there. But you've got a, um, a toilet lo lobbed in somewhere yeah. and a shower so that you can yep. have there and you're just working through doing yep. whatever you can to get it going. Um, that's the front of it before painting. Um, which is, you know, it's okay, painted up with a, some rocks at the front, it turned out really nice, so that's yep. before um, it happened. End result is that what it looked like now. So pretty amazing. So those kitchens on that top, the, the new ones up there, they are Ikea kitchens. They're Ikea, yeah. The, the bottom one is that's in the third unit, which I um, renovated last. That's a $200 eBay job. And, that, and for, for that area, that's a flash kitchen, yeah. hey? So two, unlike the other kitchens, there's, you know, the mayor is going to live in that one. Um, but, 
But, you know, that's a $200 kitchen. It's, it comes out of another property. It's still got another 10 years left in it, and they'll continue to rent it. They were renting something that was far worse than that and still paying off the mortgage. Now, for you, you got a 95 on this one, 95%, I think. $87,000 mortgage yeah. on a 95000 yeah. yep. purchase. Yeah. So $7,000 in there. A few other things that went in for the 20 grand. So um, what's your learning? Can you just go back to yeah, that? Yeah, sure. The, the shower cubicle there. Oh, I yeah, bought the, the shower cubicles on eBay thinking, beautiful, I don't have to do tiling. And, then it's, and it's great because the, what worst am I thing, put on the, the worst thing about bathrooms is if your waterproofing is no good, it just destroys timber work and walls. These are a cubicle thing that you buy, 900? No, 600. Uh, six, 600, yeah, 600 on eBay, comes yeah. with the yep. tap. You've got, you know, yep. obviously get a, a plumber to install it. Um, don't do your own plumbing. Shark bite. No, don't say that word. Um, <laughs> And so you've gone through and done all of this, and which is commendable for the fact that you know you've come from the hotel industry and you've made yourself and um, that's what YouTube's for. Yes, yeah, YouTube. I'd never like renovated, but I had I had YouTube running almost twenty four seven. You can find anything on YouTube. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Where will we come to? Become a plumber on YouTube. Um, you, mate, you you got to give it a go. <laughs> Cheers. Um, what's your advice? What's your learnings from the, out of this project? Um, really go back to the basics is all I can say. Like we, we literally had no money, um, had no idea, had no... Like a lot of you have already got investment properties and things like that, but having nothing and trying to find a way to actually implement what Dimna has uh, spoken about in her courses um, all I can say is we went back to the basics. We just literally started, went step by step, okay, what are the basic rules around, you know, good towns and, you know, the infrastructure and things, look for those things around the towns. Yes, it was very time consuming, um, but it paid off in the end. Yeah. So... I think too, you, you need to be patient. Because I didn't go to the course, Tam, Tam went, um, it was like, oh, two weeks later, oh, what's happening? So you just got to be patient, ride that wave. There, there are properties out there. Um, you just, just be patient. Just you know, you, you'll get deals that fall over. They don't happen. And you go, oh, what's the point? But you just got to keep at it, keep driving it. Good advice. Um, okay, so for your final results here, you've got your uh, original uh, PPR, which you know your parents originally lent your money back. Um, you've fixed it up, you've added a few more things to it, so that's gone up in value. You've got also got the units there as well. So your total cash flow has now gone up. It's $16,000 out of the units. Um, you increased the equity in the three units by $160,000. So just yeah. tell us um, from where you started to where you are um, today. Well, from having nothing and having to borrow money to actually buy a first home to putting in the hard effort and doing just little renovations just to increase property just slightly, just so you can draw money out to actually do something else, to purchasing a block of units that, you know, for $95,000, which is now returning us $480 a week in rent, um, and we just had an offer on a couple of weeks ago of $280,000. So, and that is in the space of uh, two years. It's yeah. gone from 95 to 280. In the, in the depth of in the depth of where you were um, with the coffee shop and all of that going on in your life, um, I'm sure you felt not that great there. I'm very and low. How do you feel today compared to that day? Oh. Mate, it, it's it's unreal. It, the the feeling you get, um, and, and it's nerve wracking when you first do your first deal. Um, but the feeling now and the education that um, I suppose we, we show to our kids and that sort of stuff, they see us doing stuff and, you know, our daddy's got to go away again, but he's doing it for this reason. Um, as Tam said, we, our twins are seven. Seven. Yeah. <laughs> Just turned seven. Um, <laughs> You know, Mind you, they turned seven you, like two sit, weeks ago. You sit with them, I sat with them um, oh, probably a year ago now and had a dollar coin and a 50 cent piece and they have two money boxes each. Um, basically one is for saving, one is for spending. Um, I put the one dollar down, the 50 cent down and both twins always pick the biggest one and that's their spending. So the, the smallest one goes in the, the savings one and the biggest one, which they think is more value, <laughs> goes in the other one. 
Massive round of applause <laughs> for these two. Thanks, Thank Darren. Thank well done. Thanks, Matt. It's interesting because, you know, seven, are they seven? I, I, I took one of my daughters, I've got four daughters, I took one of my daughters to the um, doctor one day and <laughs> I'm standing there and, and the lady behind says, um, date of birth? And I went, when's your birthday? <laughs> and all these women waiting with their kids went, oh, such a bad dad. <laughs> and I look across and there's another dad sitting there with his kid and he just goes, I'm with you, man. <laughs> Peace out, bro. <laughs>